So I tried Brad Pitt's $700 Le Domaine skincare line, so you don't have to. Well, hey guys, it's November 1st. You know what that means. This video is the monthly favorites fail, stuff I tried out over the past month that mm, we need to talk about. Now, in September of 2022, Brad Pitt launched his Le Domaine skincare line, and I did a video on it. Approximately 331 of you subscribed to my channel off of that video, so if you're still here, hello. I actually tried out these skincare products. Navigating this website is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. You know how people are always complaining about food bloggers when you try and do a recipe that they've featured on their blog, how like you have to read their whole life story before you finally get down to their recipe? Well, they do that, obviously, to optimize their SEO so that they're their page ranks in Google, but I don't know what Brad Pitt's excuse is on this Le Domain website. I think they're just trying to hide ingredient list. You're kind of hit with all of these visuals and text overlays. He blinded me with science because they throw around a lot of things like progerin. Progerin is something that accumulates in aged skin. It generates a lot of free radicals, oxidative stress, and is thought to either be a marker of or impl implicated in skin aging. So his line allegedly is going to target that and slow the aging process down. Much of what it is based off of is grape flower extract, uh, all vineyard themed. So grape is rich in polyphenols that may help combat oxidative stress in the skin. The problem with this line is that the grossly inflated price point makes it very difficult to seriously talk about any of these products without just always defaulting back to, oh my God, the price, oh my God, the price. I'm gonna try not to. So first of all is the cleansing emulsion. This is a scented mild cleanser. I have to say the fragrance on this is actually kind of pleasant to use, although if you are allergic to fragrance, this is obviously a no-go. It is a gentle, silky lather. It effectively cleanses the surface of the skin. If you have makeup, water-resistant sunscreen, this alone is probably not gonna take all of that off, especially like your mascara, but for morning cleansing, day-to-day -day cleansing needs, it's great. You could use it with a cleansing balm first to dissolve your makeup and then follow it up with this in a double cleanse method. You guys know the drill behind that, and if you're confused what is double cleansing, check out my video on double cleansing that I did recently. Um, I go into detail there. So objectively speaking, the cleanser is not too bad. Like I don't have anything negative to say about it other than, you know, caution if you're allergic to fragrance. The fragrance in it is pleasant. It does the job. It's $77 though. Like, like I said, it's very difficult for me to come on here and talk about these products without always going back to the price because it's 2023. Who wants to spend $77 on a face wash? If we were living back in you know, the 60s, the 70s, when there were so few skincare products, I could see getting tempted, intrigued. But you can't walk into a drugstore, a you know, supermarket, a Sephora, an Ulta, without finding hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of cleansers. What about this cleanser makes it any different from any of the other ones out there? Really not much other than it has Brad Pitt's name behind it and it, you know, is part of this Le Domain line but there's really not much else to it. There's nothing even necessarily in the ingredient family that to me seems like it would justify the price point. You know, some ingredients that formulators source, they are more expensive. Now, I'm not an expert on the cost of all of the different ingredients that go into skincare formulas, depending on where they come from, but I just find it really hard to believe that this is worth $77 based on my experience using it now, the ingredients. Now let's move on to Le Serum. Le Serum is a hydrating serum. You apply it to the skin after cleansing while the skin is still a bit damp. It has objectively some pretty good ingredients in it. Hyaluronic acid helps to improve moisture content in the skin. It also has compounds from centella or centella extract, which is a botanic ingredient 
that is anti-inflammatory, may help combat oxidative stress in the skin, and has been shown in small studies to perhaps be beneficial for wound healing. So it's of interest, it's in a lot of products marketed as Sika or repair or healing. The serum also has lactobacillus ferment. Ferments are rich in hydrating compounds. Ferments also have antioxidants um, and they're anti-inflammatory. They're often very soothing. Lactobacillus ferment you will find frequently in many skincare products. The serum is fragrance free, so I like that. And it's, it's not bad, truthfully, it's not bad. Um, but you guys, like I said, um, it's always going to come back to the price on these $196, $196. Oh, excuse me. And 30 cents. If this were something that had some kind of, you, you know, a, a set of ingredients in it that were really compelling, I mean, retinol, right? If it were a retinol serum and there'd been a lot of R&D behind the formula, then, you know, maybe I would say, okay. Or if it had, you know, some other, something to it. But the ingredient story is so every day. It's nice. My skin felt moisturized, soft, supple, but come on. Like there are tons of hydrating serums that I have reviewed on here before. Many great Korean brands, many of which are superior to this. This is just middle of the road in terms of a serum. Not bad. Um, definitely has benefit to the skin, but for the price point, you just, you know, don't fall for it. You have a fluid face cream for $193 and you have a cream for $242. Now, both of these are pretty similar in terms of the ingredient family. The fluid cream is more of a lotion consistency. So it's a little bit thicker than the serum, but it's a little bit thinner than the cream. But the ingredient families are very similar. The main difference between the fluid cream and the cream compared to the serum is that both the fluid cream and the cream have fragrance. And let me tell you, it is a lingering strong fragrance. It's, the fragrance is the same as what the cleanser smells like, but this time you put it on your skin and it is in your brain all day, giving you a headache. If you're someone who likes fragrance in skincare, you're not allergic to it. You know, you have to ask yourself, do I like fragrance as it's going on my skin and I'm doing my skincare routine? Or do I really want my face to continue to smell like that fragrance all day? Do I want it up in my nose that close, up close and personal. If you don't, you're, this is not for you. I mean, it's so strong. I can't wear. I can't wear it. I've tried the light cream and the cream a handful of times, but I simply could not tolerate them on my skin because the fragrance was just so. Uh, off-putting to have that heavy fragrance. It gave me a headache. So the formulas overall, they're not too greasy. They're not too oily. They moisturize the skin. The fluid face cream is $193 and the cream is $242. Yeah. Now here's where it gets interesting. This is an update, if you will, from my September 2022 video. I noticed that they have come out with uh, a alternative option at a slightly lower price point. So they have the luxury and then they have the essentials. And the difference is that if you go with a luxury, you're paying more for the packaging. It's the same product, but the luxury has like this wooden or cork top on it. And so that's what you're paying for. Then, you know, there are just some things about this and I'm trying to not, I'm trying to be objective, but some things like I just chuckled to myself, you know, I was on the website again, hunting around for the ingredient list on these products. And like, as you hover over the products, these bizarre visuals come up of, you know, video images. And it's like, what am I looking at here? It's like they got way too up close and personal to wood or an oak barrel. I can't tell what I'm looking at. And in one of these video images, it's almost like, is that a roach across the screen. I was very confused. Like who has designed this website? It, it feels like I'm being trolled. Speaking of feeling like I'm being trolled, I have kept the cream in the packaging in the box because the box is just so over the top that I almost feel like, um, I am 
committing some kind of sin by taking it out. So when I've used the cream, I just take the jar out and then I put it back in the box. But like I said, the fragrance is so strong, I can't tolerate wearing the cream on my face. So here and there, I'll dab it on my hands and use it as a hand cream. The box comes with a little box inside of it that has a travel cap because this, this lid, I mean, this is what you're paying for. This looks like something you would put like on your coffee table, right? I mean, it's over the top. That's what you're paying for. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool looking, but you can't take that out with you in your carry-on. So they include a little separate cap. Then you also get what kind of looks like a guitar pick to apply the product. So the packaging is, is an experience, I guess, but derived of science and terroir to be one with nature in your own nature. This is harmony. This is respect. This is Le Domain. There's even an asterisk next to Le Domain. Like there's gonna be a footnote somewhere, like the references, but I don't know what they're referencing because there's nothing that ties back to that asterisk. What can I say? This line, objectively, aside from the strong scent in the light cream and the cream, Objectively, it's not bad, okay? Like the products, they are what they are. They're fine, they're moisturizing, they're hydrating. The cleanser is pleasant, it, it, you know, it, it washes your face. But again, you just keep coming, I just have to keep coming back to the price point because it's like, what are we buying here that doesn't already exist? Or we're buying a piece of Brad Pitt brand is trying to market itself as like a luxury skincare brand for people who like to splurge. In my opinion, the success of those brands, luxury brands, you know, for people who enjoy luxury branding, luxury products, the success of those brands, a lot of it has to do, in my opinion, with being launched and placed the right time in the right place. For example, La Mer, it's a luxury skincare brand. I reviewed on here before, in my opinion, you know, it's overpriced for what it is. But it's got a cult following. It, people love it, who love it, and they don't care what anybody has to say. They're gonna continue to buy it and use it. But La Mer has been around for a very long time. And, you know, is, is lucky in the sense that they originated at a time where there wasn't so much at our disposal, and so it kind of, you know, was able to to grab an, an audience. Now, it's like, not only is the market so saturated with so many products at so many different price points, but hello, inflation, like this is not a time where most people are interested in dropping $230 on a small pot of cream. I just feel like 2022, 2023, it's not an easy time to launch a luxury skincare brand. No matter who you are, uh, I don't think Brad's celebrity is going to carry this brand and I think it will you know, fizzle out. It's available now on Amazon and I'm wondering if the switch over to having the option of the essentials with the less you know, over the top packaging aspect for a slightly reduced cost. I'm wondering if that speaks to the fact that nobody is really interested in plopping down this kind of coin on a celebrity skincare line. Anyway, y'all, I really wanted to bring it full circle because roughly a year ago, I did, you know, give my initial thoughts when the brand was launched and nothing has really changed other than these products aren't necessarily objectively bad. I, you know, would not fear for the health of your skin if you chose to buy them. I'm more concerned with, you know, the financial health of this line for you. Uh, I think it's over the top. You could buy so much more. But the other product that I tried out this past month that ended up being a fail for me, but I really do think it comes down to a me problem, is the Inky List new tripeptide plumping lip balm. Now, I was really optimistic that this was going to be a more affordable alternative to the Polish Choice hyaluronic acid plus peptide lip booster, which I really, really like because 
The ingredients are kind of similar. The peptides are similar in, in these, and we'll get to that in a moment. But for whatever reason, this product really irritated my lips, especially the corners of my mouth. I mean, I would get a lot of cracking, discomfort. As soon as I stopped, that could heal with just using plain petroleum jelly. If I reintroduced it, boom, it would come right back. I can't figure out what ingredient might have done that because it has shea butter, babusa seed oil, mango seed butter, maybe, I'm not sure. And it has some peptides in it, which I have used before. They're the same ones that are in the Polish Choice Peptide Plus HA Lip Booster. Um, it has a peptide that is a collagen fragment that is supposed to allegedly get in and stimulate collagen synthesis pathways. It's part of, uh, it's one of the two peptides in Matrixyl 3000. And it also has that um, newer peptide, Matrixyl Synth 6, or Palmitoyl Tripeptide 38. When I put this on, it feels nice, it's moisturizing, but there's something about the formula that for whatever reason irritates my lips. And I don't know, you know, the common ir lip irritants, the common lip allergens are absent in this, so I'm honestly not really sure what it is. Um, it has, it also has hyaluronic acid in it. That's the plumping. You know, hyaluronic acid helps to retain moisture, which which has a plumping effect. Initially I thought, is there something in this that is plumping because it is an irritant? And there's not nothing like that. A lot of times the lip plumpers, they have some irritating ingredients that bring in some swelling, make your lips look plump, and but also it can be super irritating. This does not have that. So like I said, I think this is a me problem, not necessarily a problem with the product overall, but I was really disappointed because this is substantially less expensive than the Polish Choice one. The Polish Choice one is $33, although I think it's currently on sale. This is $12.99. All right, so a month of a lot of fails. Sometimes celebrity brands are not a complete fail. Sometimes they have some surprising gems like, um, for example, the road skin, that peptide glazing fluid, I really hope that that sticks around because that product objectively is good. Whereas, you know, others are just, you know, kind of a cash grab and you sort of scratch your head going, what were they thinking? Especially here with uh, Brad Pitt charging us like $700 to wash and moisturize our face. <laughs> um, a river does not run through it. <laughs> All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, on the end slate, I'm going to put my September favorites fails video if you wanna check that one out next. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.